life inside Sweden's Stridsvagen 103. Sweden has been a neutral nation for the better part of two centuries. This, however, is an armed neutrality, and the Scandinavian nation has spent a considerable amount of time and money investing in military hardware to defend itself from possible aggression. During the Cold War, Sweden found itself in need of a new tank, one which emphasized the defensive nature of Swedish military philosophy. The result was the Stridsvagen 103, an odd-looking yet innovative chapter in the long and complex history of tank design. Origins and name Plans for the Stridvagen 103 began in the mid-1950s, when the Swedish military sought a replacement for their primary tank, the British Centurion. Several ideas were proposed, including using foreign designs. Sven Berga of the Swedish Arms Administration proposed a domestic design that was called Alternative S, or S-Tank. After some modifications, Alternative S was accepted as the Centurion replacement and became the Stridsvagen 103, which went into production in 1965 and saw service with the Swedish military starting in 1967. The name Stridsvagen translates as Combat Wagon. Dimensions After studies during the Second World War showed that a majority of tank kills were from hits on the turret, the Stridsvagen did away with that feature, placing the main gun directly into the hull in a fixed position. As a result, the tank has a low silhouette, at only 7 feet, about 2.5 feet lower than the Centurion it replaced. It's also just under 12 feet wide and 29.5 feet long, and weighs in at 46.8 tons. Armament the Stridsvagen 103 was armed with a Bofors 105mm L74 rifled cannon as the main gun, which fired the same ammunition as the British L7 105mm gun, which has been used on later versions of the Centurion and the German Leopard 1, among others. This was fixed in place pointing forwards, meaning that the entire tank would have to turn to fire on the enemy. Also, because of this, the gun could only fire when the Stridsvagen was stationary, an obvious drawback. This wasn't seen as a major issue, however, as Swedish military doctrine assumed that their forces would almost certainly be outnumbered anyway. And the winner of a tank duel was usually the tank that scored the first hit, making accuracy the primary priority. Though it may seem unconventional, having a main gun in a fixed position was not a new feature, having been used to great effect by the German Jagdpanther, among others. There's some argument that the lack of a turret makes the Stridsvagen 103 a tank hunter or an assault gun, though generally it's classified as a main battle tank. The Stridsvagen 103 also made use of an autoloader, which reduced the need for extra crew members and could carry 50 rounds of ammunition and had a rate of fire of approximately one round every three seconds. Once the gun has fired, the empty cartridge casings are automatically ejected out of the back of the vehicle through a portal. In addition to the main gun, there were also two KSP-58 7.62mm machine guns, as well as a third that could be mounted on the commander's cupola. If you're fascinated by the Stridsvagen 103 and want to see it up close, head to the Bovington Tank Museum in the UK during this year's Tank Fest. You can also experience it firsthand in today's sponsor, World of Tanks. World of Tanks offers an extensive tank arsenal, ensuring you're spoiled for choice. Whether you prefer tank destroyers, artillery, or light, medium, and heavy tanks, you can play your way. Want to rush in guns blazing? Go ahead. Prefer to ambush opponents with sneaky tactics? Do it. With over 800 tanks, including the Stridsvagen 103, there's always a new way to play and a strategy to master. But it's not just about the tanks. World of Tanks immerses you in massive battles across diverse terrains. Roll out across open fields, climb steep hills, tear across deserts, and pick your battles in urban and industrial zones. Rally your teammates, devise a battle plan, and dominate the competition in over 40 battle arenas. And the best part? It's free to play. Whether you're a novice or a pro, you can jump into World of Tanks and experience the same thrill as a hundred million other players. Join a global community of gamers who share your passion for tanks and strategy. So, if you're ready to command your tank and dive into epic battles, check out World of Tanks. Use code 24TANKFEST. Click the link in the description below. First-time players can jump in with the Sherman VC Firefly, get 250,000 credits, three days of World of Tanks Premium, the Overlord 
Ford 2D style and 250 gold too. Plus, you get three rental tanks for 10 battles each, including the Tiger 131, the Tog 2, and the Ram 2. Watch all your favorite tanks in action through the upcoming Tank Fest online livestream too. Find the link in the description below. Now on to armor. The Sturzwagen 103 was protected by sloped frontal armor that measured in at around 4 inches thick. The innovative suspension system could also lower the vehicle up to 5 inches, giving the tank an even lower profile. It could also be equipped with a bulldozer blade to help it dig a scrape into the ground so it could move into a hull-down position to avoid detection from the enemy. This also added to the thickness of the frontal armor. A metal fence accessory consisting of 32 welded vertical metal bars could be fitted to the front of the tank as protection against incoming heat rounds in a battle situation. Fortunately, this was never put to the test. Suspension and Transmission Because of the lack of turret, aiming the main gun was a major issue. To remedy this, the Stridswagen was given a hydropneumatic suspension system, which could raise or lower the entire vehicle with an elevation or depression range of 22 degrees, much more than many other tanks of the era. The tank was also maneuverable enough to swivel on its own axis to help with aiming. The transmission of the Stridswagen 103 was automatic and could operate in reverse just as well as forwards. Engine and Performance Another innovative feature on the Stridswagen was the engine, or more accurately, two engines. The first variant of the Stridswagen was propelled by a Rolls-Royce K60 240-horsepower diesel engine for cruising and turning the tank to aim, and a 300-horsepower Boeing GT502 gas turbine engine for high-speed sprints. This would be replaced with a Caterpillar 553 gas turbine engine in later models, which could generate 490 horsepower. This was the first time a turbine engine would be used in a tank. This feature would later be copied in the Soviet T-80 and American M1 Abrams tanks. The top speed of the Stridswagen was 37 miles per hour on flat, open surfaces, riding on four rubber-coated road wheels. The Stridswagen was also amphibious. It came with a built-in float screen, which took about 25 minutes to set up. Once in place, the tank could float, albeit at a greatly reduced speed of a bit under 4 miles per hour on the water. Crew the Stridswagen had a crew of three, a commander, a driver, and a radio operator, who could also drive the tank. The commander and the driver were seated in the front of the tank, and the commander would pass on firing information to the driver, who would turn the tank, aiming the gun. In addition, the commander had a duplicate set of controls on his side of the vehicle, as well as a set of gun sights allowing him to immediately take action when necessary. The commander also had access to smoke dischargers, which could obscure the Stridswagen from the enemy when needed. The radio operator was seated in the rear of the tank, facing that direction. He also had a set of driving controls, allowing him to drive the tank in reverse if necessary, keeping the thick frontal armor facing the enemy, even as they withdrew. Original plans for the Stridswagen only included two crew members, though this was increased to three to make tasks such as guard duty and field maintenance easier. Production and Variants The Stridswagen went into production from 1967 to 1971. During that time, 291 vehicles were manufactured. Three distinct models were made. The first, designated the Stridswagen 103A, were the initial run of vehicles. The 103B were upgraded with a more powerful Caterpillar engine. And the 103C featured another engine upgrade, as well as an updated fire control system and laser rangefinder. A final version, the 103D, featured another fire control upgrade, night vision, and a few other minor modifications to the suspension and engine. Only one of these models was made, which was a modified C variant, though this never went into production. Service The Stridswagen entered service in 1967 with the Swedish military, which was the sole user of the vehicle. Its innovative design gave it a low silhouette, making it difficult to hit in a tank-versus-tank -tank engagement. This, when combined with operating from an ambush position, made it an ideal choice for engaging enemy armed forces. However, the Stridswagen 103 never saw combat, so its effectiveness is only theoretical. The primary rationale behind the Stridswagen 103 was an emphasis on accuracy of the main gun and avoiding return fire. 
In the 1950s and 60s, most tanks lacked effective gyro stabilizers and had to fire from a stationary position anyway, making a turretless tank a viable option. By the 1970s, however, such stabilizers became more commonplace, allowing tanks to fire accurately while on the move, and the lack of a rotating turret was now a liability rather than an asset. The Stridsvagen 103 remained in service with the Swedish military primarily as a training vehicle until it was retired from service in 1997, replaced with the Stridsvagen 122, a modified version of the German Leopard 2. Today, only the D variant as well as several of the C variants are located at the Swedish Tank Museum and are still in running condition, and several others are found in tank museums around the world. While innovative, the Stridsvagen 103 was ultimately a dead end in tank design, and though it never saw frontline service, it still represents a unique chapter in the ever-evolving story of tank evolution.